Rogue Legacy bridges the gap between the games that I played in my childhood and the games that I'm most interested in playing now. It's openly inspired by games like Castlevania, but it's also much more than just a nostalgic retread. In Rogue Legacy, you control an entire bloodline whose goal it is to uncover the secrets of a mysterious, shifting castle. Rogue Legacy is technically a roguelike, which is a genre you may or may not have heard of. Basically, in roguelikes, whenever your character dies, they stay dead for good. Rogue Legacy puts a unique twist on this idea by letting you take over the offspring of each hero that dies. With each new son and daughter that you're playing as, the castle itself actually resets. But in each run, you earn gold that you can put towards permanent upgrades that you can pass on to each new generation. Upgrades range from really obvious stuff like HP up and attack up to some big gameplay changing features like new classes or the ability to double jump. You're actually forced to spend all of your gold before you enter the castle because there is a gatekeeper there who collects whatever you have left over before each new run. As somebody who usually hoards all of his gold and all of his items in RPGs, I actually really appreciated that the game forced me to spend my money like that because it provided this constant sense of progress that's usually lacking in roguelikes. Most of my characters in Rogue Legacy didn't last for longer than 10 minutes, but that short lifespan really encouraged me to experiment. Each time you make a character, you are given three options and they are randomly assigned a gender, a class, and bonus traits such as colorblindness, hypochondriac, or immunity to pain. Some of those traits, such as Vertigo, can completely screw up a run by flipping the whole world upside down, but it's hard to get frustrated at something that's so clever and so silly. The game is incredibly playful, and it's always presenting you with something new to discover. Even though the castle is randomized, each time it is split into four areas. The castle, the forest, the tower, and the dungeon. In each of these areas, your goal is to defeat a boss that's going to open the way to the final boss of the game. These bosses are massive foes, and they can be really, really difficult. The final boss is especially bad. There's no walk to get to him, so you're not really building up any gold reserves on the way, and that means that you really need to go out of your way to build up the gold that you need to stand a chance against him. The last couple of hours leading up to the final boss were really the only moments of Rogue Legacy where I kind of felt like I was wasting my time. Rogue Legacy is full of surprises. If you're not unlocking new abilities or some shinier new armor, then you're discovering a graphical overhaul that you've never seen before, or solving a really difficult platforming puzzle for some sort of bonus reward. The game can be a lot of hard work, but even at its most difficult, Rogue Legacy rewards patience generously.